Oh, yes, please record. I'll start again. <laughs> so loving kindness in summary can be practiced as an attitude or a way of regarding the world, a way of relating to meeting, inclining our minds towards our feelings, towards our body, towards any particular situation in life that we may encounter. And, uh, and that's something we can practice throughout the day, throughout our lives. Um, and this is sort of starting to accomplish, starting to uh, really deepen the second factor of the Eightfold Path. But there's also a kind of loving kindness practice that uses the um, practice of metta as more of a cultivation. So we're um, intentionally generating emotions and wholesome states of loving kindness in the mind that can actually lead us to states of deep samadhi. So in other words, we use um, an object usually of metta. So we choose a person, it can be ourself, it can be someone that we're close to or that's very dear to us. It can even be somebody difficult, although that's not recommended in the beginning. And this person becomes our object in the meditation practice. So in a similar way that in breath meditation, our breath is kind of our focus. It's the thing that we orient our awareness around. In the case of loving kindness, it's these beings that we orient our practice around and that we keep on bringing to mind again and again. And in order to do this, people use different ways. Some people visualize the person, some people uh, use phrases to kind of facilitate those wishes of loving kindness, to direct the mind more clearly towards the intentions of loving kindness, such as may I be happy or may they be happy, may they be peaceful, may they be well. And you kind of hold this person in mind whilst uh, sending these thoughts, these wishes of loving kindness. And it's very important also to stay connected to the body uh, throughout the practice. So to establish some mindfulness of the body, first of all, and then to stay connected to that, especially any feelings that might arise around the chest, the heart area, uh, because generally this is an emotion that we're cultivating and it tends to be felt most easily around that area, but it could be felt anywhere in the body throughout the body or maybe even in the top of the head or um, any place where you start to feel a feeling of sort of warmth and relaxation maybe just a softness um, a kind of sense of ease that's connected to the meta practice this is kind of the feeling or the emotional aspect of the meta and this is what we really want to be uh, uh, not looking for and not trying to kind of achieve, but to be receptive to. So uh, so we're going to do some meta practice together and I'll give some guidance. And if you have your own way to practice, that's fine too. Um, you know, if at any point in the guidance you feel like that's enough now, I'd like to just stay at this place with the meta practice. I don't want to like start sending to someone else that's fine too. So please let it be natural and, and organic and helpful for you, depending on your mind and your body at this moment, or whenever you get to that place in the practice. Otherwise, I shall offer some guidance. And I think today I'm going to talk about metta, particularly the aspect of metta that is around acceptance. So there's many aspects to metta. And I think we, we highlighted already um, Gratitude as a part of metta. And then last time it was trust, I think, or it might be the opposite. Uh, because these are all aspects of loving kindness. And today I thought, let's go for acceptance. Because metta is not a fluffy feeling, you know, it's not some kind of uh, layer that we kind of build over our other emotions or some kind of protective shield, although it has a protective element to it. It's something that's, uh, that learns to embrace everything and learns to embrace every aspect of ourself. Okay, so we'll see how it goes. I don't really pre-plan these things, so <laughs> we'll just see what comes. So please uh, get comfortable, especially for meta practice. For all meditation, it's really important to uh, listen to your body and what your body is uh, asking, how your body is asking you to care for it. Because so often we just push our bodies around and kind of treat them as our slaves rather than our friends. And so metta starts with being kind to what's right in front of us, which is our bodies. And if you would like to 
gently close your eyes. That may help you to come more in contact with your felt experience. Already a huge realm of the senses, the realm of sight has been closed off. So the mind starts to turn inward. And just coming in contact with your body and how it's sitting, first of all, noticing the general posture that you've chosen and making any uh, adjustments in the beginning because you'll be sitting for about 40 minutes or so. And seeing if you can welcome your body into this space by giving it permission, first of all, to relax and to take up the space around it too. Sometimes we tend to sit in a really contracted way. I sometimes notice I'm sort of just subtly tight in certain areas as though, you know, there's no space around me. And when I remind, say, my shoulders or my thighs, that there's like air, there's an atmosphere around me, there's a lot of space. It just gently allows those muscles to relax. As though the body is slightly expanding like a sponge. And recognizing the earth below the body, the ground holding you. Your weight is just like a little feather on this great earth. So you can give over to the earth. And noticing if there's any tightness or tension anywhere in the body and see how it may feel to bring in an attitude of acceptance. Recognizing that whatever you experience right now in body or mind is a result of everything you've been doing up to now. And maybe external conditions as well most of which are completely out of our control. So this is where we've arrived in this moment. This is what we have to work with. And when we accept what's in front of us right now, then we can learn how to care. and create the causes for peace, for happiness, for relaxation simply by skillfully relating to what's here. Sometimes it can help me to imagine that I'm relating to my body, not as a possession, but as a friend. So just as a friend may turn up at the door or on the phone, on Skype these days, feeling a little bit stressed or anxious, maybe feeling sad. I would hold a space that was accepting and warm for that friend. 
space where they could just be heard. They don't want to be fixed. And that hearing, that listening is so healing for that friend. So see if you can similarly hold a warm and accepting space for your own body and mind. Listening deeply to what it's saying to you and to what's needed. What would be a wise response? This may take the form of phrases of loving kindness or compassion. That are relevant to you right now, such as. May I be gentle with my body and mind. May I be kind to my tiredness. May I accept, may I be content. May I embrace this moment. May I embrace myself just as I am. So choose any phrase that resonates for you or maybe more than one phrase. And just repeating this within yourself. and listening after the phrase to the resonance in the heart, staying connected to your own heart area and sincerely wishing yourself well. Giving that feeling of metta along with a very open-hearted acceptance chance to grow and trusting the process to evolve in its own time. Noticing if there's any resistance to receiving your own kindness and allowing that to be as well.
Sometimes emotions might arise that don't seem what you may expect, don't seem so close to metta or loving kindness. See if you can allow them to be too. If you're feeling sad, anxious, Loving kindness would respond with acceptance. So may I accept and embrace myself just as I am. With all my flaws, idiosyncrasies, maybe mistakes that I've made. I forgive myself. I allow it all to be held in this accepting, embracing, unconditional loving kindness and care. Even opening to the possibility of that. How would it feel to know that everything, every experience, the body, mind, and in the emotional realm is completely welcome? No longer stigmatizing your mind. Now inviting you to stay connected with your body, stay embodied with an attitude of loving kindness and acceptance and see if a dear person comes to mind. Someone who you find it very easy to accept for who they are. 
even though you know the weaknesses, you also see their strengths. And you accept them, you embrace them. Just for who they are. So this should not be a person with whom you have any particular hopes or investment with. It's someone who you have a very pure-hearted relationship with. Sometimes this can even be a cat or a pet, another kind of pet. I have a lovely plant downstairs. I actually had a nightmare that it was uh, dying last night. <laughs> Oh, I think I have loving kindness towards that plant, even in my dreams. <laughs> See if you can choose a human being, if possible, who gives you that feeling, who you find it easy to accept. And maybe sensing them sitting close by. Remembering how it feels to be around them in their presence. Perhaps images come to mind, whatever it is, just so you know that you have this person as the object now of your loving kindness. And connecting with your heartfelt wishes for them. You might find that the loving kindness flows very naturally without the need for any words, but it can help to get a steady flow of loving kindness to just drop in a phrase from time to time. And stay present in the pause between each phrase to where the loving kindness is winting the mind. Staying embodied and receptive to any feelings of loving kindness that might arise. Perhaps noticing this dear person's body and mind relax as they feel accepted and embraced unconditionally in the power of this loving kindness. Knowing you care for them just as they are.
when we accept another person, when we accept ourselves, there's no business to do. That acceptance settles or business or fixing up. As a result of which the mind becomes still. I allow the mind to become quieter. Perhaps pausing for longer between each phrase. As you continue to give this gift of acceptance to this dear person in your life. And from here, I invite you to start spreading loving kindness towards beings who you maybe don't know very well. It could be an individual or it could be all beings who are 
unknown or not well known to you. All the beings going about their everyday business. Having emotions similar to our own. Perhaps feeling joy, anticipation of something in their life. Perhaps feeling tender or confused. May they too accept themselves just as they are. May they find peace even amidst the difficulties they face in life. recognizing that most beings in this world that we share are not known to us well. Most are strangers. Maybe people we've not really thought about or cared for very much but they too desire happiness and recoil from pain. So may all beings towards whom we don't have strong feelings of liking or dislike, may they all be happy and well. And allow the mind to expand forward and behind, to the left, to the right, outwards, in all directions, above and below, to all the so-called neutral people in this world. People living everyday lives, And recognizing that within this world that we share, there are also people who we don't like very much, who maybe we condemn. Perhaps people you know personally or people you hear about on the news, in the papers, who cause harm to others through their ignorance.
May they too find happiness and peace. May they come in contact with guidance to help them inflict less harm. Perhaps if we hadn't encountered the Buddha's teachings, we too would cause others more pain cause ourselves more pain. So may all those people who we find it difficult to accept, who it's difficult for us to embrace, may they too be happy, be at ease. May they accept themselves accept their mistakes. And resolve to live in this world with hearts of loving kindness. Perhaps recognizing that they're no different from us the people who we find difficult. Maybe we are someone who others find difficult too. So may we all learn to accept one another, recognizing that people change. By giving this gift of loving kindness, we help them on the path. We help ourselves. Start from a place of acceptance and love. May all beings in this planet Earth and universe, human beings, non-human beings, beings we may not even know that exist. May we all accept ourselves just as we are, recognizing our potential to develop on the path. May all beings be happy, be peaceful, be at ease. All animals, maybe you have a pet. All the wild animals, stray dogs in the streets, the rats, the cockroaches, the beings that people tend to shun or see as pests. All living lives of their own. According to their own karma. May they be safe. May they be well. Even insignificant beings like little insects. Beings who only live for a few moments, may they too be happy and well. Protected from harm. And all invisible beings, perhaps in different realms.
between existences. The ghosts, the devas. Who knows where they are if they're there? Wherever there's life, seen or unseen, may all beings be happy and well. So just allowing the heart, the mind to spread this loving kindness to infinite beings wherever they are. Healing any pain, bringing a sense of peace. And resting in this boundless nature of loving kindness for a few more moments. And now gently coming back into this room, into your body and mind. Noticing how you're feeling right now. Accepting the results of the meditation. Nothing to do with you, just the effect of all the causes that went before. And perhaps just making an intention for the day to accept whatever arises. Whether you're feeling joyful, whether there are some difficulties you're yet to face, you're tired, you're energized, whatever it is, may I accept and embrace whatever arises, whatever situation I meet today, holding myself kindly in loving kindness. Sabe Sata Sabe Pana Sabe Buddha Sabe Pogala Sabe Atabawa Pariapana Sabe Tio Sabe Purvisa Sabe Ariya 
Sabayanaria Sabaydewa Sabay Manusa Sabay Widi Padika Awaya Hon to Abya Paja Hon to Aniga Hon to Sukiatanam Pavi Hon to Duka Munjan to Yada Lada Sampati to Mawenga Chantu Kama Saka Sad. <laughs> Even the sadhus were quite gentle and soft, <laughs> which is fine. And I accept you, he didn't do any sadhus. <laughs> Oh, I left a nice comment. Thank you for this opportunity to connect with our community and share such valuable intentions of acceptance and gentle meta. So bye bye, John, wherever you are. So we still have a few minutes, not many, but we usually like to give the opportunity for any feedback, comments, questions, reflections anyone might have. I ought to also say that to people in the room, yes. <coughs> So Erica would like to say something. I don't know if you'll hear her from, you want to come right up? You can even be on the, That's good okay, scary. okay. <laughs> um, I was wondering if, um, can you hear? Yeah. The four Satipatthanas, yeah. the uh, feeling Satipatthana. Yeah. So is the, does the feeling of metta, can that go there? Yeah, I think so. So the question was, did everyone hear that? Whether the no, whether the feeling of metta could be considered part of the uh, Vedana Satipatthana, so those four Satipatthanas are um, basically the four focuses of mindfulness, where we put our mind, so the body, the feelings, experiences we have, whether pleasant, unpleasant, or painful, or anything in between in the whole spectrum. So they were asking whether the feeling of metta can go there, and I would say definitely yes. Um, it can go there, um, probably, hopefully, as a, a more pleasant feeling, um, and also as a pure feeling, because the, the feeling aspect of the Satipatthana can also be divided into two other types, all the feelings, whether pleasant, painful, or neither, so there's that three kinds, they can also be seen as either um, Samisa or Niramisa, which basically means like connected with the sensual world, so somewhat less wholesome or connected more with like spiritual emotions so leading us further on on the spiritual path and leading us away from the world of the senses ultimately so i think metta would be considered one of those very wholesome uh aspects of feeling so they'd be considered niramisha mm -hmm. um where the intention is very pure um even if we're still feeling it within the body at the moment it's not really a, the body it's actually an aspect of the mind and it's it's in a sense what the mind uh puts on to our experience it's what it adds on and it's adding on something hopefully very beautiful so feelings of meta tend to be like softness or lightness or just maybe even an expansiveness like i had feelings of sadness today but there was also a softness and a kind of gentleness in the holding of that and i think that's also um, an aspect of meta loving kindness so it's the kind of feelings that lead out of suffering that we want to cultivate. And the Buddha definitely uh, encouraged that. Yeah. So these are wholesome things. Inspiration, gratitude, there would also be aspects of that. They're also mental as well. So they could also see them as part of the um, Chitta Satipatthana as well. You know, the mind being expansive rather than contracted, for example. Um, but they all overlap. The Satipatthanas all overlap. Yeah.
Is that that makes sense? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Any other question or reflection? Did anyone struggle with any aspect of the practice or have feelings they uh, couldn't easily accept? That's also fine. <laughs> Sometimes we meet our edge in these practices as well. You're all very quiet, so yeah. I felt some impatience. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good. Paul to unmute. I, I just wanted to respond to um, the impatience thing and, you know, the fact that I said good. <laughs> the, the, the good is just that you know it, you felt it, you experienced it, and hopefully that also gave you the opportunity to see if you could accept it somewhat. So, yeah. yeah. Paul. Hello. Uh, yeah, it was something you said, um, uh, be kind to your tiredness. <laughs> and I thought that was really good, actually, because um, um, I, personally, I, last night I, I was really tired. I had a long week at work and I and I went around apologising to my kids and my other half, saying, I'm really sorry, but I'm really tired. I'm going to go to bed, you know, and it was really early. It was something like nine o'clock. I normally don't go to bed at that time, but I was apologising to everyone. And I was I was actually a bit disappointed in myself. And part of my job as well, I come into contact with people who have problems with tiredness and um I, I think they beat themselves up I feel tired and if we were kind to our tiredness and say do you know what um I'm tired I'm gonna I'm just gonna rest you know I think we'd be all a bit better off for that so Absolutely. um it really struck a chord um oh. so um so next time I feel tired I'm gonna go do you know what I'm gonna look after this tiredness and oh. to bed. so yeah that's what it really touched a chord thank you Thank you for the reflection. I'm really glad that it did. And yeah, I also find myself apologizing often for how I feel. It's ridiculous, really. I mean, I guess, yeah, we can feel disappointed when we see that in ourselves, but we're conditioned that way. So that's, you know, accepting that too, but noticing that, yeah, there might be a more skillful approach. And it's interesting you brought it up because I also looked at myself, realized I'm exhausted today and don't have so many resources because of that. And I thought, you know, after this, I could actually lie down. <laughs> <That's> quite, a, <laughs> quite a radical thought. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks. I think, you know, as a society, we're pretty much exhausted, to be honest. So mm -hmm. many people struggle with the tiredness, and it's that struggle that makes it such a, a source of suffering. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks for sharing. <laughs> like Kim said, the acceptance approach is very helpful. Um, Someone else saying, I found the acceptance of self quite powerful and felt like staying with that longer. Yeah, me too, actually. But then I remembered that I'd said that we need to get onto the difficult. <laughs> I could have also stayed with it longer, but it's kind of like, yeah, we just go through the different categories. Next week, it will be just uh, not next week. I think in two weeks time, we'll start again with oneself and it'll be just oneself. And then we spread a tiny bit at the end. Um, but yeah. It's great when we know what we need and you can go away and practice that and, and, you know, stay with the places that you feel need more acceptance, which is often oneself. Yeah. And the reason also I didn't go through like the, the neutral so-called person or the difficult person as individuals, because my mind was getting quite still. And actually, when you just spread it more indiscriminately, it takes less effort once you get used to it. It's kind of because you don't have to have a person that you hold in mind, it's more a kind of just spreading. And that's how meta can become one pointed. Like when it's all beings, then it's almost like all is the same as one. So it can become one pointed that way. So, yeah. These are just short little meditations, but yeah, it's nice to get a feel for different ways to do it. Ah, thank you. I needed this to start a difficult day with a friend who's dying. Thank you all. Oh, that's Maria in Norway. I didn't notice you here. Yeah, there you are. Hi. Oh, sending you meta and please send it to your sister Annika from me. <laughs> thank you. Really beautiful to share this time with everybody today. And someone else said, although I felt settled and embraced, I felt some slight sadness in my heart area, which I didn't realize until you said that we can embrace whoever we are. Thank you. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also because I guess that acceptance and that embracing can open up more of experience to us because we shut so much of it out. And so we start to see things that we didn't maybe notice before because we were subconsciously just, you know, not really open to them. So that's great. You can start to see different layers, isn't it, of, uh, of experience. The subtler the mind gets, the more, the stronger the mindfulness becomes. Because metta, of course, is going, it's another practice of mindfulness. Every time that you keep that person in mind, recite that other phrase, you know, the phrase is like vitaka, like the initial application of attention to its object. And then the resonance of that, the kind of staying with that is like vichara, um, sustained attention. In that sense, it's similar to the breath meditation. There, the uh, initial application, the vitaka, would be just like noticing the breath. Like you notice it for a moment and then maybe it's gone. And the vichara would be staying with the whole breath, you know, from beginning to end. So in a similar way, yeah, the mindfulness is being built up through metta as well. And uh, I think it's super helpful to add metta to all practices to add it to mindfulness as in make it kindfulness no matter what we experience because it does help us to stay with experience long enough to see it start to open up yeah um, great thank you for all your reflections and feedback and always very kind words <laughs> great so uh yes it's time to end so i will let you go accept that now the session has come to an end and we'll do whatever we need to do from here so may you accept whatever arises for you during the day even if they're not emotions that you particularly normally would welcome even more opportunity to practice acceptance and loving kindness toward them so 